Hi guys, this is O-Level Chemistry, paper 12, June 2015, question 1. The fractional distillation apparatus shown is being used to separate a mixture of two liquids. A thermometer is missing from the apparatus. Where should the bulb of the thermometer be placed? Okay, so the fractional distillation apparatus is shown. We have three positions, A, B, C, and D. Okay, D is uh, eliminated automatically because D would give us the temperature of the collected liquid. That is not what we want. We need to know the boiling point of the liquid that is being collected. So A is a position that is above the point from where the gas goes into the condenser. B is exactly the point from where the gas goes into the condenser. And C is below the point from where the gas goes into the condenser. So in order to find the boiling point of the liquid, or the uh, temperature at which the liquid was collected, we need to place the bulb of the thermometer exactly at the point where the gas would enter the condenser. So this would make option B the correct option for this question. Question two, the concentration of aqueous sodium carbonate can be found by Reaction with hydrochloric acid of known concentration using the indicator methyl orange. So basically, this is the process of titration. Okay, so which items of equipment are needed? We need a burette, yes. Do we need a measuring cylinder? No, because measuring cylinder measures approximate volumes. In titration, all volumes that are to be taken should be accurate and accurate volumes of liquids are uh, measured using a burette and a pipette. And gas syringe, there is no gas involved in this titration that needs to be measured or collected. So gas syringe is not needed. So next we have burette, measuring cylinder and thermometer. Change of temperature need not be noted during this titration. Next we have burette, yes, pipette, yes. And conical flask is the container in which the titration will take place, yes. So all three given pieces of apparatus are correct here. And next, we've got the burette, yes, pipette, yes, stopwatch. We are not measuring the rate of reaction, so we do not need a stopwatch for this experiment. As a result, the correct option for this question is option C. Question three, which molecules all contain one or more double covalent bonds? Okay, so chlorine, chlorine is a CLCL single bonded molecule. Next is nitrogen. Nitrogen is a molecule with a triple bond between two nitrogen atoms. Next is methane. Methane contains one carbon, single covalently bonded to four separate hydrogen atoms. So none of these contain any covalent double bonds. Next, we've got chlorine already seen. Then we have oxygen. Oxygen has got a double bond between two oxygen atoms. And ethene has got a double bond between two carbon atoms. And each carbon atoms form two single bonds with two separate hydrogen atoms each. So this does contain a double bond. So this choice is not correct because this includes chlorine, which does not contain any double bond. Next, we have oxygen. Oxygen has a double bond. Then we have hydrogen chloride. Hydrogen chloride is HCl with a single covalent bond between the atoms. So this is wrong. And then we have ethene. So because of the presence of hydrogen chloride, this option becomes incorrect as well. And next, we've got oxygen. Yes, oxygen has a double bond. Carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is a molecule with a carbon in the center forming a double covalent bond with one oxygen atom on one side and a double covalent bond with another oxygen atom on another side. So carbon dioxide does have double covalent bonds present. And then we have ethene, which also has double covalent bonds present. So all the given gases here are ones that contain double covalent bonds, making option D the correct option for this question. Question four, the metals chromium, cobalt, iron, and manganese are all transition elements. Which particles have the same number of electrons? So in order to find out the number of electrons, first we need to know the proton number of each of these elements. So for chromium, it is 24. For cobalt, it is 27. For iron, it is 26. And for manganese, it is 25. 
So these are the proton numbers. That means these are the number of electrons present in the atoms. So now CO2 positive. CO2 positive will have two electrons being removed. So that would make 27 minus 2, 25 for CO2 positive. And for chromium, it is 24. So they are not the same number of electrons. Next, for CO2 positive, it is 25. And for Fe3+, plus, it would be 26 minus 3, which would give us 23, which is also not the same as CO2 positive. So this is also eliminated. Next, we've got Cr having 24 electrons and Mn2+, plus would be 25 minus 2, giving us 23. So these are also not the same. So this option has also been eliminated. Lastly, we've got Fe3 positive, that would be 26 minus 3, giving us 23. And then Mn2 plus, which would be 25 minus 2, giving us 23, which is equal number of electrons present, making option D the correct option for this question. Question 5. Which substance has metallic bonding? So the data we have is whether it conducts electricity when solid and when liquid. So if you're talking about a substance having metallic bonding, it has to be a metal. So it will conduct electricity whether it is a solid or a liquid. So this eliminates options C and D. Now we need to find the state of the product formed on reaction with oxygen. So whenever a metal reacts with oxygen, it forms a metallic oxide, which is supposed to be a solid. So option A has solid written in it and B has gas written in it, eliminating option B, making option A the correct option for this question. Question six, which compound contains only eight covalent bonds? So now we'll make these compounds with the bonds present. So for A, we've got CH2OH bonded to another CH2OH. So here we have the number of bonds present as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So we've got 9 covalent bonds present in this molecule. Next, we have CH2OH, which would be made like this and then we've got CH3 which would be made like this. So now we will count the number of bonds present. This would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So this has got 8 covalent bonds present. So this should be the correct answer. Next we've got C double OH and C double OH. So this would be C double bond O single bond OH bonded to C double bond O single bond OH and we count the number of bonds. So this would be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7, 8 and 9. In this we've got 9 covalent bonds present. And the last structure is C double OH which would be made in a similar way as the previous structure bonded to CH2 OH which would be made in a similar way as to structure in A. So the number of bonds present here are 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this molecule also contains 9 covalent bonds present. So the only molecule with 8 covalent bonds present is given in option B, making B the correct option for this question. Question 7. The table shows the results of two reactions of an aqueous solution of a salt. Reagent added is excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide. We have a white precipitate forming. Now, since we've added sodium hydroxide and we have a white precipitate forming, the cation that gives us this result is calcium or Ca2 positive. And the next reagent added is dilute nitric acid and aqueous silver nitrate. We get a white precipitate. So this shows the presence of chloride ion. Had it been a cream precipitate, it would be bromide. Had it been a yellow precipitate, it would have been iodide. And had there been no result, it would indicate the absence of halide ions. All three would be absent. So both these tests have given us that this salt solution contains calcium and chloride, making it calcium chloride. So what could be the identity of the salt? Calcium chloride, yes. Calcium iodide, no. 
zinc chloride no zinc iodide no this makes option a the correct option for this question question 8 which row shows correct statements about the speed at which a gas diffuses so effect of molecular mass so we need to remember the lower the molecular mass the faster would be the rate of diffusion so this eliminates options a and b and for effect of temperature we need to remember that the greater the temperature the greater the kinetic energy possessed by the molecules and the greater would be their movement during diffusion so this should be higher temperature uh, they diffuse faster at a higher temperature so option c has higher temperature mentioned in it making it correct and option d has lower temperature mentioned in it making it incorrect therefore the correct option for this question is option c question nine what happens when sodium chloride melts Covalent bonds in a giant lattice are broken. Okay, sodium chloride does have a giant ionic lattice, not a covalent lattice, so this option is incorrect. Electrons are released from atoms. No. There are no atoms present. There are ions present, first of all, and then electrons are not released. Electrostatic forces of attraction between ions are overcome. Yes, that is how an ionic lattice actually breaks when an ionic compound melts. The electrostatic attraction between the ions, which is basically the ionic bond. So the ionic bonds are overcome. So these electrostatic forces of attractions are no longer present. That is why the structure no longer uh, resembles a solid and it melts. And molecules are separated into ions. Molecules are not present, ions are present. Therefore, option C is the correct option for this question. Question 10. Using the period table for the relative atomic masses, which has the greatest mass? Okay, so iodine has a mass of 127, carbon has a mass of 12, oxygen has a mass of 16, beryllium has a mass of 9, and sodium has a mass of 23. Okay, so 0 0.1 moles of iodine molecule. So this would be 0 0.1 multiplied by 127 plus 127, which would give us 254. 254 into 0 0.1 would give us 25.4. Moles into MR will give us the mass. And they are asking which has the greatest mass. So this has 25.4. Next, we've got 0 0.5 moles of carbon dioxide. That would be 0 0.5 into 12 plus 16 plus 16, that makes it 44. Half of 44 is 22. Next, we've got beryllium oxide and 1 mole. So 1 into 9 plus 16, making it 25. 25 into 1 is 25. And lastly, we've got sodium and 1 mole of sodium. That would be 1 into 23, giving us a mass of 23 grams. So out of the four calculated masses the highest mass is 25.4 grams making option a the correct option for this question